Live with Lenny Henry, Rick Mayo, Mel Smith, Adrian Edmondson, Chris Barry, Brenton Saunders, Robbie Coltrane, Chris Bryan, Parliament Dancer, Andy De La Tour, Ross Sex, Star Council, and Slade! Is it live? Oh, uh, good evening! And hello to all you people who haven't got anything better to do on a Saturday night either. Um, <laughs> by the way, this is Saturday Live. My name's Lenny Henry. Do you like the set? Yeah. It's pretty nifty, isn't it? We were going to have uh, all of the fairground here, but the Animal Liberation Front broke in and freed the horses off the merry-go-round. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this is all you're getting tonight. <laughs> But a lot of people have been saying to me, you know, why do a live show? In fact, my brain's saying it to me now. Why are you doing a live show? You know what happened the last time. <laughs> Can't tell you what my bum's doing. And, um... <laughs> but, um, if you're wondering what's going to happen, right, if anything goes wrong tonight, which it won't, will it, Paul? <laughs> um, we actually have uh, a diversion for you. Look, we actually have got the potter's wheel. So if you see him at any point during the show, you know there's been a big cock-up, OK? <laughs> but the real reason for doing a live show uh, on TV, I suppose, is um, so that it can be topical. You know, you've got to be topical. OK, topical. Right, topical. It's been cold recently. There's no joke here, it's just been cold. OK, you want topical? Here's topical, right? I saw in the papers this week that uh, Liz Taylor might get married again. <laughs> can you believe that? She's been married so many times that the last two honeymoons overlapped. <laughs> also, I read that chivalry isn't dead in America. This week on a New York subway train, a man stood up and offered a lady his gun. <laughs> had an exhausting time over the Christmas. I had to do this job, you know. I was shoveling snow out of Stacey Keach's nose. <laughs> New Year's been disappointed, though, especially the New Year's Honours list. Did you see that? Daley Thompson didn't get one. Aww. I couldn't believe it. And I watched the Olympics, and Daley won everything. He deserved at least a knighthood. <laughs> or, you know, King Daley. <laughs> Just took your poor luck when you talk to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> see, I'll tell you why he didn't get an honour, right? That's because... He said he wanted to marry Princess Anne, right? I mean, it was only a joke, for God's sake. Well, Mark Phillips said the same thing a few years ago. She took him bloody seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but the highlight of uh, 1984 for me was the Olympics. And um, it was dead good. Don't the Americans think up some strange events? I mean, come on, synchronised swimming. <laughs> <laughs> what you actually got was two women in a pool looking stupid and drowning at exactly the same time. <laughs> It was great when Britain won something, though, wasn't it? I mean, our accommodators went mental. Daley Thompson. He's nearly there, he's nearly there, he's nearly there. Yes, he's got his tracksuit off! <laughs> the Americans won so many medals, they were really blasé, you know. What, did we get something else? <laughs> you mean the black guy in 100 metres won something? <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> well, black athletes, weren't there? I saw one race. There was uh, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Holland, England, three from the USA, one from Nigeria. They were all black. It was great because if one of them won, it didn't matter. They were really pleased for each other, you know. <laughs> hey, my brother, well done. I beat you this time, but never mind. Come back to my house and smoke some ganja. <laughs> hey, bro, I don't mind if I do. I'll race you there. <laughs> See who wins that sucker, Jack. And, um, <laughs> the one thing I did, trying to get the timing going, the one thing I did notice <laughs> about the Olympics was that boxers talk the same whatever part of the world they come from. It's true, like in England, we've got Frank Bruno go, Well, you know, I mean Harry. <laughs> I went in the ring, Harry, you know what I mean? I was moving in everything, Harry, you know what I mean? And then, all of a sudden, Harry, this geezer bloody hit me, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it, Harry, you know what I mean? If I'd have known it was going to hit me, I wouldn't have gone in there, Harry, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the American comes on and goes, Wow. I went in me, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I went in the ring, Harry, Harry. I was going to jab. Harry, I was going to jab. I was, I was going to jab. I was going to jab. Harry, and the dude hit me so hard. My brain came out of my nose. <laughs> and even the Japanese one, he's the same. He comes on, he goes, Dukubo, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we 
are the Dangerous Brothers. Dangerous Brothers! My name is the Dangerous Brothers! All right, I'll do the talk. My name, he will do the talking! My name is Richard Dangerous, and this is Sir Adrian Dangerous! Unusually dangerous, I trust you'll agree. Yes, we are in Dangerland. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's wet our danger buds as Sir Adrian teases us with some unusually dangerous bicycling. Sir Adrian! I have got no brakes! No brakes! <laughs> seem to be going very swimmingly. <laughs> um, well, let's look at the video of me recording my new hit single. <laughs> and the piano. Right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
Jackson, the climax of tonight's entertainment, where the lovely piping Sir Adrian Dangerous will hurl himself deliberately off the apex of this strange and interesting office. No, 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 off the top. Oh, yes, off the top. Tapping on every window. Tapping on every window. And saying, hello, beauty, to every secretary I pass on my descent of fight. And saying, hello, secret. Hello, what are you doing? for celebration nobody digging coal everybody on the door it's like a football team with a blind man in goal he can't see the state of play because he's facing the wrong damn way well that's a very good analogy which to be quite frank i don't see so let me turn to a tory mp who happens to be sitting next to me no u-turn no change the same old tune Upturn in economy, expected quite soon. Unemployment going down. Pound riding high. Stick with Maggie, baby. Sea pigs fly. Mr. Dredd, what is your response to that? I think the man is a brat. <laughs> because the government's economic strategy has got more holes than Meccano. And the pound is sinking faster than the Belgrano. Look, that's a lot of bills. Now let me turn to the unemployed. You once said they should all be destroyed. Yes, I really didn't mean the whole mob. Just the ones who don't have a job. And those that the country doesn't need could be recycled into animal feed. <laughs> well, an interesting suggestion. Now let's move on to another question. What about the NHS? Why is it in such a mess? 
because they're killing him to death. Look, that's not strictly true. They won't keep costs down. And if the transplant surgeon shopped around, they find kidneys in Tesco's at 20 pence a pound. I don't believe it. You must tell me. I do it. I do it. I Well, I hope that's cleared up the confusion. And any last words of conclusion? The trouble with this administration is that the only remedy is amputation. And if you had a big boil on your ear, then cut it off. About here. I say, wait a minute. I'm never just a politician because they've got too much ambition. And when you're voting to make them a winner, they come along and take away your dinner. And when you hear a standing ovation, you know you're in a lying situation. Stop it! Nice little craft, Charlie. That's one of the new pen and holiday books. New? My old dad was a craftsman in one of their boat yards years ago. But they're still well built, though. Mm, so is that young woman. Yeah. Some of them pen and holiday cruisers, they got tellies, duvets, showers, fridges. Oh, I wish my old cottage had. Pen and Holidays, the new name on the Norfolk Broads with over 75 years of experience. Ring now for our free brochure. This Sunday, the mail on Sunday gazes at your stars for the coming year. We examine your fortunes, your ambitions, Bye. and your love life. Though whether the stars agree with us is a different matter. Your stars for 86. 
A separate color guide this week in the mail on Sunday. The pressures of daily life may lead to nervous tension. A nervous tension may lead to a headache that slows you down. That's when many people reach for the number one best-selling brand of pain reliever, Anodin. When you're slowed by tense nervous headache, the fast, effective pain relieving ingredient of Anodin can help you get going again. Whenever pain puts a break on your life, Anodin helps you carry on. Don't be slowed down by headache. Go for Anodin. See my new five-door metro. I went one better. Got it for the same price as a three-door. From Austin Rover. See this Maestro 1.6? I went one better. Got it for the same price as a 1.3 from Austin Rover. On my Montego van and Pla, I got alloy wheels, fuel injection, and leather seats. All this at no extra cost. You can go one better with Austin Rover. Now we're motoring. I always like my crisps to have that just cook taste. That's why I insist on Walker's crisps. And that's why, when I reach the end of one packet... I always like my crisps to have that just cook taste. Don't you insist on Walker's crisps time and time again? I did not know they were going to throw him off the roof. I thought maybe they'd mess up his hair a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know they were going to throw him off the roof. I didn't know. I didn't know they were going to throw him off the roof. Honest to God, I didn't know. It's my brother. Oh, God. Oh, look what they've done to you. Well, what's the matter? I didn't know they were going to throw him off the roof. Honest to God, I didn't know. Oh, Joey, 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 what am I going to do now? I think you'll find it's a dummy. So what if he only made the second grade at kindergarten? So what if he couldn't even write his own name? Not even with a stencil and a spray can. <laughs> he was still my brother. See, that's what happens when people cross us. We go in hard. We shoot them full of more holes than the Pittsburgh infield. I don't know what's the big deal. He just got knocked down by a Chevy. From the deck of a ship. <laughs> oh, God! It's my brother! Oh, look what they've done to you! Your brother? How many brothers you got? Ten! I come from a big family! Now look at it this way. At least you're gonna save a lot of money on Christmas presents. <laughs> it was suicide, Father, okay? Suicide? What do you mean, suicide? It was his own car. <laughs> Boys, I want you to gather around and listen to me. I got something very important to say to you. Oh, Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Jesus is with you everywhere, boys. He's with you down in the holes. He's with you up in the derricks. He's with you, Tom. He's with you, Johnny. He's even with Smelly Thompson, but not very close. He was with you in that car. He took the cylinder heads, the exhaust valves, the valve guides. He was on top of the toroidal cavity. Pistons. He was right sitting in there in the deck. He was down in the double dome draft. Carburetors. There, screaming through the exhaust, through the five-speed generator. But I digress. God's with you when he's working down in the holes. He's with you when you're playing with the generators. He's even with you when you go to the jazz. Do you think that's any fun for him? No. He's with you everywhere. He's in spirit. He's in light. He's... 
Hey, what time's your call this? <laughs> you gotta follow your conscience, Terry. You gotta go to the police. I ain't no yellow canary, Edie. I'm not going to the cops. But you gotta do the honest thing. I'll do the honest thing, but I'm not going to the cops, and that's it. <laughs> Terry, you're such a big and tough and muscular. Handsome, don't forget handsome. Handsome <laughs> guy on the surface, but underneath you're all kind of soft and mushy and gooey and sticky and kind of wobbly. Yeah, yeah, I, I know all that, you know, but. Look what they did. Look what they did to my birdies. Don't go to the cops. Stick with me, kid. You can have a slice of the bootleg racket. Prohibition's gonna make us rich. But, Charlie, Prohibition's been dead for 20 years now. You can get liquor in stores. Don't you believe it? That's just a cover. That's a bit of contender, you know? We got gambling, prostitution. I could add a shot of the title, you know, maybe got a couple extra potatoes. Narcotics, dirty magazines. Instead of a one-way ticket to Verrucaville. I tell you, I got the judges in here. The police chiefs in here. Where do you keep the politicians? Right here. <laughs> in my back pocket. Was that cheese on both burgers with extra mayo and fries? No. We paid big money when we wanted a steaming hot plate of fish and chips. <laughs> That's it. Forget it. I'm going home. You can't go home. You gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. I gotta go into intensive care. <laughs> you don't wanna go to work, Terry. You wanna go home and watch Dr. Kildare and see if he marries Nurse Loki? <laughs> I don't wanna go home. Uh, it's a repeat. You don't get to marry Nurse Wilkins. Let's go to work. Okay, I'll we'll go to work. I've done it. What the hell are you doing here, bum? I've come to work. I've got guts. Yeah, guts in your brain box, pal. It's a bank holiday. <laughs> gentlemen, for the first time, Jennifer Saunders would like to present her new band. They are the new Wham! Please give a warm hand for Raw Sex! And no photographs, please. My new band. Um, they'll be playing sorry, some things sorry. for you later. I hope. Sorry to interrupt you. Did you say they're your band? Yes, I own them. Um, you actually, actually some, sorry. You're actually paying these people to play this sort of. Yes, they're then. an investment. They're going to make me some money, which is more than you do. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry. You told me no one was getting paid for this jig tonight. <laughs> I'm certainly not getting paid. Well, I'm 27. Yes. yes. I'm 27. And I'm a bit fed up of being on your comedy yop scheme, Jennifer. Well. <laughs> get paid for instance <laughs> when you're funny um, <laughs> well, that's the truth of it isn't it anyway uh, my band um, well, maybe we'll occasionally if did... i just got the chance to be funny i'd be all right here's your fun. chance to be funny if you've got something for the ladies and gentlemen perhaps <laughs> hmm? if you've got something for the lovely ladies and gentlemen uh, well I, 
I've got, I've got a song. Well, let's hear the song. Let's hear the smashing song. We'd love that, wouldn't we? <laughs> let's hear the lovely oh, smashing great. song. Great. Well, um, there are a couple of props here um, for the song. I'm so happy to be able to do this for you. Um, Jen, if you'd like to wear this hat and uh, play this penny whistle. Thank you. And uh, boys, would you like to put on your musical comedy hat? Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. And Dwayne, would you play the tabor, please? Thank you. And uh, Ken, can you play the guitar, Ken? Not really. No. <laughs> How quickly can you learn to play the guitar, Ken? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Um, just put my hat on. Now then, um, this is a sort of um, folky kind of song which I've written myself. <laughs> very, very much not the chance to do it. <laughs> As I was going to Camden Town all on a market day, a pretty little Camden lad I met upon the way. His business was to market with butter, cheese, and whey. We both drove there together, my boys, father I did all day. We both drove there together, my boys, father I did all day. As we drove there together, my boys, a sitting side by side. I espied this fair lad's trouser flies, by chance they came untied. <laughs> For fear that he might lose them, I unto him did say, Your flies they are untied, my lord, father I diddle all day. <laughs> As we drove on together, my boys, to the outskirts of the town, at length this fair young gentleman, he stopped to looking around. Oh, since you've been so venturesome, please zip them up for me. I will if you go to the apple grove. Father, I did all day. It's a bit cheeky here, man. Yeah. Father, I did all day. Right, there's only 20 more verses. <laughs> And straight we fell a-bonking, a-bonking long and hard. My love juice was unleashed, and we had need of lard. It stroke was many a jolly one, as I did smile and moan. We gave it some trombone, my boys, we gave it some trombone. We gave it some trombone, my boys, we gave it some trombone. A bit naughty. And when we got to market, with butter, cheese and whey, no hippie wanted to for they had melted away so homeward to his parents father i did a little day so homeward to oh no they've had to go they've had to go what a shame what a shame it's a shame because there's only another 12 verses and oh no it's a musician's union you see they've only played for three minutes and they have to go and have a drink in the bar <laughs> Oh, he was going to lose his maidenhood yes. in the next one. And was he? Was he? Yes. Still, it doesn't matter really because I shouldn't think the audience could quite believe their ears then, could they? <laughs> I shouldn't think you've heard a song like that for hundreds and hundreds of years, have you? <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years. I shouldn't think you could quite believe your ears. So it's very good to get embarrassed occasionally, I hear. It's very good to get hideously, horribly embarrassed by something that's so terrible occasionally, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> you say sorry, Dawn. <laughs> Apologise. Apologise now. Sorry. Louder. I'm sorry. And to me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Royal Highness. Thank you. <laughs> you got some video television you'd like to put on now, Paul? <laughs> Fellow peace-loving Americans, today as I look over the White House lawns at the start of this new year, I want to bring you a message. A message of hope, a message of peace. You know, I believe in peace, in goodwill, in understanding. And this is why, as a peacemaker, at this time of peace, my message to all of you fellow peace-loving Americans is simply this. Bomb the commie bastards and let's get it over with. <laughs> you know, we Americans want peace more than most people realize. You want a piece of Nicaragua? You want a piece of El Salvador? And you want a piece of the Middle East to go with the bits we already own? And it's to the Middle East that I now turn. You know, I don't pretend there's a simple answer to the problem of the Middle East. If there was, we'd have dropped it on them by now. <laughs> Even if it meant killing lots and lots of innocent human beings. Or Arabs. <laughs> and on that subject of nuclear war, I would like to turn to all our many friends over there in the state of Europe. You've asked me the straight question. 
Is the peace-loving American nation prepared to sit back and watch Europe being destroyed by the nuclear holocaust? Well, let me give you a straight answer to a straight question. Yes. <laughs> yes, because what we Americans believe in is more than just an ideology. We believe in cars that are bigger than everyone else's and make a nice squealy sound when they go around corners. <laughs> We believe in a form of spelling that misses out all those tricky, difficult letters no one notices anyway. And we believe in a constitution that says a man is innocent, providing he can pay enough money to prove it. <laughs> you know, Nance and I joined together today to bring you this New Year message of peace. <laughs> and I hope sincerely, with my hand on my heart, both cheeks of it, that this year will bring peace and joy to one and all. Except for those pinko lefty reds. I hope we blow those goddamn camel impersonating liver skin commie dictators off the earth faster than a fart through a pair of stringy underpants. Happy New Year, suckers. And I'm gonna say it just one more time. You ain't seen nothing yet.
over 200 pounds a second, 19 million a day, 7 billion a year, disappears in wasted money, wasted energy. Fuel bills blow the fuel bills. Even in the land of the mad, you'd think the businessmen would know better. But no, they love to squander energy and throw away profits. Because it's nobody's job to stop it. Still, the land of the mad is just a made-up place in a television commercial, isn't it? Isn't it? Energy efficiency year is on. Get more for your money. More out of energy. More for your money. Phone free for a free information pack. Your father goes, sir? No, we're nearly home now, thanks. Good night. Good night, sir. We're on our way home. We're on Shell. Our way home. Making the most of motoring. We're going home. A freezing cold bedroom isn't exactly the most inviting of places. But think about a gas heater with prices from 135 pounds delivered and fitted. They're really inexpensive, and gas costs so little to heat your home day or night. Gas heaters, nothing else has quite the same effect. Get more for your money. More out of energy. More for your money. It's energy efficiency year. Phone free for a free information pack. in my Porsche with the jacuzzi on the back seat. I like to listen to a certain type of music so I can kick back and relax. This is just one of the tunes that I like to dig off on, you know what I mean? It's Paul Weller, that star council, and you're the best thing. Sing the song, Paul, because this boy can croon.
Thank you. Star Council. So, Mr. Benito, we are doing. We are dedicated to the total eradication of all nuclear weapons. Now, we must get rid of all our missiles. Okay, the question is, when do we start? We have already started. Huh? You have? Duh. We started sending ours to Finland. <laughs> Uh, right, send in the interviewee, would you? <coughs> no, I said... Se Never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need the windows cleaning today, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... Uh... That's true. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps tomorrow, eh? <laughs> I don't think you need him cleaning tomorrow either, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that then, isn't it? Shall I sit down? What for? <laughs> For the interview. What interview? The interview for the job. Look, <laughs> we don't have any jobs for window cleaners. Well, it's a good job I'm not a window cleaner then, isn't it? <laughs> Look, seem to have a little misunderstanding here. Um, you see, I'm supposed to be interviewing somebody for the job of sales representative. Mr. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Wi I'm Mr. Wilson. You're Mr. Wilson? Yeah. I spoke to you on the phone. You didn't sound... <laughs> like him. Should we uh, get on with him? Yes, yes, all right. Well, uh, it won't take very long, because obviously there are qualifications required for this job. Uh, like O-levels. How many? Four. I've got six. <laughs> <laughs> right, good. It's good. And A-levels. Well, I've got three A-levels and... Uh, Fifteen. What? <laughs> very, very responsible job, you see. <clears throat> Listen, pal, you might need a degree in philosophy to sell encyclopedias in Hampstead, but you do not need 15 A-levels to flog double glazing in Wapping. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Just my little joke. <laughs> well, you seem to have all the basic qualifications. Uh, there is just one test I'll have to put you through before I can make my final decision. I would like you to fill in the missing word in the following phrases. OK, let's go. Bar, bar, sheep. <laughs> Black. That's right. Scylla. Black. Hot tall in the kettle. Black. Sheep of the family. Black. Decker. Double. Sorry, that should have been blackened. What? <laughs> blackened. <laughs> it means I'm afraid that you haven't got the job. I'm Why? very. <laughs> but it's obvious. You're too tall. <laughs> I haven't got anything against tall people at all, all right? In fact, some of my best friends are very, very tall. And um, there's nothing wrong with tall people that a pair of slightly shorter legs wouldn't put right. But um, <laughs> I'm afraid this job is a big disadvantage. Why is that? Well, they're uh, very, very low desks, you see, and tall people, they can't get their legs... Listen, under don't give me that! Give you what? All this too tall garbage. You make me sick sitting there with your beer gut stuffed behind that desk and then our jobs like Mars bars. You know why I didn't get the job. Why don't you just admit it? All right! I admit it. It's because I'm black. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You got that all wrong, didn't you? Yeah, my concentration went. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm afraid you failed the managing director test. Oh. But if you come back tomorrow, you can try for the immigration official. Oh. <laughs> Just like me. Oh, one more applicant, then go for lunch. Listen, I'm sick of this. That's the 15th failed managing director. I'm supposed to be on a youth opportunity scheme here. Why can't I have a turn behind a desk? <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> You're black! <laughs> well, that was absolutely remarkable. Uh, now, I thought, we believed that we were getting the pool's forecast there, but uh, I suppose the sketch is just as good, since none of you are going to win anything anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, we're going over live to the South Bank, we believe, where Slade are playing uh, in the 954. What an extraordinary band they are. <laughs>
right there. And my big count. I got a good time.